Hello, I'm Mitch Schechter, Editor-in-Chief of The Schechter Report, and I'm here at the Star Chefs International Chefs Conference in New York with Philip Preston, President of PolySci. Philip, can you tell us why your company has chosen to exhibit at this Star Chefs Conference? Yes, Star Chefs uh, presents an opportunity for PolyScience to show the best chefs in the world our equipment and uh, introduce new ideas and also get new ideas from these chefs and see the, the areas they're working in and we get a little creative boost from being here and I think we also share a little bit of uh, knowledge while we're here. Thank you. Now, I understand you've brought a, a quite a range of products to this particular Congress. Uh, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to show us some of their features and applications. I'd be happy to. So this product, Philip, I understand is called the smoking gun. Can you show us how it operates? Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, the smoking gun will provide cold smoke for things that you really haven't traditionally been able to smoke. One example is uh, at a recent dinner party, I served bourbon on the rocks where I had smoked the water prior to making ice cubes. So you had this ever-changing cocktail uh, with an infusion of apple smoke. That's the ice melted. Other applications that the smoking gun might be used for in a professional kitchen would include what? Well, really you could smoke almost any liquid it is pretty much intended for things that, if you would normally smoke it, it's not the right tool. Uh, but things like smoking barbecue sauce, smoking butter, uh, uh, smoking lettuce. Hmm. There's a wide range of applications and really the creativity is the, is the only limit. Do you provide the wood chips themselves as well as the apparatus? Yes, we do. We actually uh, supply a kit of classic smoke woods, a fruit wood kit, and a vintage barrel uh, wood kit. So we give you uh, all the tools necessary. Additionally though, you can smoke things like peppercorns or even, uh, I've had good luck with uh, Lapsang tea. We're now going to take a few moments to examine uh, PolyScience's sous vide system. Philip, what can you tell our readers about it? Well, the sous vide professional is a thermal circulator that will pump heat and control a bath up to seven gallons with extreme precision. And it allows chefs to really take control of the temperature that they cook a product. Uh, sous vide has been embraced because of the advantages of extremely repeatable results, uh, labor savings, uh, less uh, waste, you get a, in proteins almost a 20% higher yield and I think it is the, the ability to open up a time window. Traditionally we've always cooked with extremely high heat and relied on precise timing. With sous vide you open up the time window because you are bringing the product to the exact temperature and it can't go over that temperature. It also, I understand, is a good cooking methodology for preserving texture and quality and appearance of different types of proteins and vegetables. Is that correct? It is. It, uh, with vegetables especially, uh, you, you retain a lot more color because you don't have the oxidation. Uh, with proteins, uh, you get, uh, as I said, the, the precise results but an additional benefit, and one that I especially like actually, is the fact that you can cook a lot of secondary cuts and do a long-term cook on it. For example, uh, I do a 17-hour skirt steak that is just a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of meat. Cuts very easily, and skirt steak can be a little unreliable, and uh, you don't want to serve someone shoe leather. Well, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, what sort of energy requirements does the system uh, have? Well, we actually have posted on our website some uh, studies that we've done showing a comparison and the energy savings over a traditional approach is significant. 
Uh, we've got all of the details of that information posted. What and is your URL for your website? Uh, you can reach us at www.cuisinetechnology.com. There's also a link through the polyscience.com website. The next product I'd like you to discuss for us, Philip, would be the, your vacuum sealing equipment. Yes, uh, this is a new uh, vacuum sealer that we've released, and it has the all the typical advantages of a chamber vacuum sealer, but we've incorporated an additional feature, and that's a thermal printer. So uh, it provides uh, the chef with the opportunity to do better record keeping and data logging uh, as uh, may be required by the health department. And certainly for HACCP programs. Yes, that was, uh, that was really our intent with this. Uh, so it is a traditional vacuum sealer, but once I finish the seal process, it will print out a label. I, uh, it'll show date uh, and uh, product that I've packaged and uh, you could even uh, include a recipe or expiration date in that printout. This recipe is Star Chefs. <laughs> yes, and that will hold that consistency uh, without atmosphere in the packaging for and, and traditionally would then go into either a cooking bath or a cold storage environment? Yes. Yeah, and for us, of course, typically these bags are used in sous vide cooking. I do want to say, however, that uh, a vacuum seal bag is not an essential component of sous vide cooking. And quite frankly, I uh, find myself doing more and more experimentation with just precise temperature cooking, um, putting containers of either stock or butter in a precisely controlled bath and uh, not dealing with the oxygen-free environment. Uh, really, uh, I, I find more and more chefs are challenged by the health department because of the oxygen-free environment. And uh, I think we wrongly assume in sous vide cooking that uh, the bag is an essential component. I had always thought so, yes. Yeah, really the, the only purpose of this bag is to provide good thermal conductivity to the product. And there are many other ways that you can achieve that without the necessity of uh, an oxygen-free environment. The next piece of equipment we're going to look at is PolyScience's anti-griddle. Philip, can you give us a little idea of how this works? Yes, the uh, anti-griddle is a refrigeration system that is cooling a stainless steel plate to minus 30 Fahrenheit. This unit was developed in a collaborative effort with Chef Grant Ackett's at Alinea and uh, Shortly after developing this unit for him, uh, I actually won the Food Network Award for technology, and it has been embraced by uh, a number of chefs now as a wonderful tool for unidirectional freezing. Uh, really quite different from an approach of putting something in the freezer, uh, because you could freeze the bottom and still retain a liquid top. Yes. So let me show you something. Okay, good. We're, Philip is now going to put a dollop of olive oil onto the anti-griddle's stainless surface. Now, typically, uh, for example, I'll, I'll use creme anglaise quite often, uh, making creme anglaise lollipops, and that cooling process is about 90 seconds. Of course, oil is going to be a little slower than that. But we can see it congealing as we're looking at it. Yes, yes. And uh, some fun things with this, of course, you could uh, utilize this, uh, in it, for example, with a salad where uh, olive oil will melt at a different rate from balsamic. Yes. 
another trick with the anti-griddle when dealing with things that are rather delicate, uh, I will stretch plastic wrap over the top. So it's really a very thin layer, doesn't, doesn't impede the heat transfer, and it allows me to lift delicate things off of the anti-griddle, including uh, perhaps a design of chocolate. Oh, how nice. And uh, what sort of power requirement does this uh, equipment rec uh, have? It's actually pretty minimal. Uh, it is about the same as a household refrigerator. So again, it can perform in an energy efficient manner. Now, I think what we'll try to do is just lift this off so we can see that you know, the top surface will still be a little bit liquid. But well done. And now we have a nice little lozenge of, of olive oil. oil. Right, of pure essence. What we're looking at now is PolyScience's refrigerated liquid circulator. Can you tell us how this functions and who, what applications a chef might find for it? Yeah, really what we're doing is showing our flagship of liquid temperature control. This particular unit will control from minus 40 centigrade up to 200 centigrade. And within that range, we have a stability of plus or minus four thousandths of a degree. And we have a wide array of connectivity, even including an iPhone app. Uh, the culinary applications, I think, are, this unit really is a little ahead of uh, the, the times on what most people require. However, I think that in the future, we'll see some benefits of the ability to just data log temperatures via the USB flash drive. And uh, also, I think as we can speed up heat uh, the temperature change, the ability to enter a, a time temperature program, hold food at a refrigerator temperature, ramp up, cook it, and then ramp back down to refrigerator temperatures all automatically uh, is going to be something that will be really a benefit to chefs in the years to come. Now, this may sound like a simplistic question, but can you make ice with it? Well, uh, the, uh, of course, Grant Ackett's is one of the uh, people that embraces new technology and he's using this unit uh, with aviary bar and filling balloons with water retaining the bath temperature at minus 15 centigrade by dropping the balloon in for about six minutes uh, it forms a beautiful shell uh, it pulls the balloon out removes the uh, the balloon itself drills a hole, drains out the water, and then when you order an old fashioned, they provide it in the ball of ice. And so you have that interactive experience of literally, it's like breaking an egg to get to your cocktail. Fabulous. Thank you. Did you want to do a flip? Let's, let's try it. Okay. It may or may not work. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll just try now to show a demonstration of the uh, properties and uh, abilities of the refrigerated circular. Please do. Yeah, what I'm going to try and show here is uh, what precise temperature control can do. We all think that water freezes at zero centigrade. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I've got water in this container that's actually at minus six centigrade. <laughs> and so what we could see is the phenomena of supercooling, which then would promote the nucleation or freezing on impact. The next piece of equipment from PolyScience that I'd like you to, to help us understand and, uh, is the rotary vacuum evaporator. Can you tell us how it works and what it's used for? Yes, the rotary vacuum evaporator really is uh, working as a distillation unit. However, because all of this glassware is under vacuum, we reduce the boiling point. Actually, we can boil even at room temperature. And as opposed to a traditional distillation, 
uh, by boiling and removing volatile compounds at a low temperature, you retain that bright flavor and you don't blow off and destroy all of the uh, aromatics. So what we've got running in here right now is just a apple cider. And so what we'll end up with on this side will be um, almost like an apple compote. And on the other side, as this evaporates, and it, and it rotates to create that thin film, so it evaporates quite readily. Mm. The chiller is cooling these coils. So as it boils and goes in vapor phase, it then collects on the coils and it is captured in this vessel. And on this side, you would have all of the really bright aromatics and Flavors. left behind would be the sugar, citric acid, and solid components. Everything distills clear. Uh, again, one of the first people to embrace this was Grant Ackett's, and I think the first thing on his menu was actually a, he had blended Thai chili peppers, lemongrass, some really traditional Thai flavors, and then rotary vacuum evaporate uh, distillation to um, provide a shot that when you smelled it, you would say it would really light you on fire with the uh, spicy flavor, but you drank it like tea. Huh. And so it was a beautiful uh, uh, dish. What I do with this quite often would be uh, uh, a distillation of hard cider to Calvados. Ah. And uh, so... How long would such a process require? Well, I could typically process uh, almost a gallon an hour. That's quite rapid. That's perhaps up to per uh, commercial standard in terms of capacity. Uh, yeah, it would be uh, for a really boutique yeah, <laughs> true. operation. Of course, uh, for me, this is just for my own uh, in-house experimentation. And in doing this, I found that I could get a beautiful uh, result, but what I was missing was really that ability to uh, barrel age uh, and also a lack of patience to wait three years for uh, opening that barrel. Yes. And so uh, one of our newest tools is actually a method that I found that could infuse that oak flavor in three minutes instead of three years. Thank you. The next piece of equipment that, Philip, I'd like you to help us learn more about and understand is known as the Sonic Prep. What is it for and how does it work? Well, the Sonic Prep really is a different approach to mixing. We can think of this in many ways like a stick blender or a homogenizer. However, we're using ultrasonic sound waves uh, to impact the food. I'll show you in this soundproof chamber how this unit works. What's inside the chamber? Right now we have a glass uh, and I believe this has vodka and some orange peel. So what we'll be doing is just creating uh, a, an infusion of the orange flavors into the vodka using ultrasonics. I'll turn this on. Now, it can either be run in a pulsed mode or in a consistent mode. And as I was saying earlier, with uh, my Calvados, I will actually put it in a bowl and throw white oak chips in with it. And in a matter of two minutes, I've got about three years of oak nah. on the Calvados. It's remarkable. It also can be used to create some pretty incredible emulsions. Here's an example. I'll just show outside this cabinet. We just have olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Oop, I've knocked over my vodka. And so we'll see how rapidly
And now we have, in just seconds, an emulsion of oil and vinegar. Yeah. And what we found is that this emulsion will stick, uh, I think the longest I've tried it is a week uh, before I got tired of looking at it. But it will stay blended, you're saying, for, for at least a week. It's an extremely stable emulsion. And this again is accomplished with the use of ultrasonics. What sort of pulsation rate does this develop? We're sending out 20,000 pulses per second. And you can almost think of it as acting like a 20,000 pulse per second pump. I see. And so it will blast the sound waves through product and move the flavor profiles through. For example, making a mojito where you hit the mint leaves with ultrasonics. When you're done, the mint leaves look perfectly intact, but you've exchanged the flavor through them. Finally, Philip, what I'd like to ask you is what do you consider the most important facts and information about your company that you'd like our readers to know about? Well, I think, you know, being a very established company, uh, since 1963, PolyScience has provided temperature control solutions. Now, for the last seven years, we've been engaged with the culinary market. And really, our objectives are, first and foremost, to support chefs. And uh, I think we really share the passion of this exploration into new methodologies that can be used in food preparation to give a better result and more consistency in their processes. Seems to me that you guys are really pushing the boundaries of what's possible for chefs, and I congratulate you on that. Well, thank you so much, and uh, for us, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Thank you, Philip.